Starting off this countdown in no particular order, we've got John Hamm. John Hamm is most notably famous for his role in the hit television series Mad Men as a cutthroat advertising executive. What he may not want you to know about him, however, were his less than savory college days that landed him in some serious trouble. In 1990, John was arrested for his alleged role in a fraternity hazing that turned horribly violent. His fraternity house was even dissolved after Hamm and his friends harmed a pledge so violently that he was in the hospital hospital, even going as far as to light him on fire. John was charged with a misdemeanor offense, and when he was asked about it in 2018, his response wasn't the best. Well, I was essentially acquitted. I wasn't convicted of anything. I was caught up in a big situation, a stupid kid in a stupid situation, and it was a bummer. I moved on from it. Okay, now we're moving on, I guess. In at number nine is Richard Pryor, the iconic comedian who is often cited as direct inspiration for other comedy legends like Eddie Murphy and Dave Chappelle. Pryor changed the game. But what you may not know is that there was an extremely dark past behind the All Smiles comic. Richard grew up in an extremely unstable childhood, raised by a substance using mother in a brothel in Illinois. Richard saw things that no child should ever have to see, and to cope with such a horrifying childhood, he also turned to substance use to self medicate. Richard was married seven times to five different women who had trouble with the comic's insatiable personal life. He even almost passed away at his own hand when he doused himself in rum and lit himself himself on fire while using substances. Pryor's friend even stated in an interview, quote, he has about 13 personalities, and while you could deal with nine of them, the other four are a nightmare. At number eight is Billy Tipton. Billy Tipton, if you haven't heard of him, was a revered jazz musician who rose to fame in the 1940s and 1950s. He lived his life in relative normalcy outside of his celebrity status. Although he was never married, he did have five serious girlfriends, all of whom referred to themselves as Miss Tipton. Eventually, he settled down with a woman named Kelly and they adopted three sons together. It wasn't until his death from a stomach ulcer in 1989 that, as he was being rushed to the hospital, his giant secret was uncovered. Billy Tipton was born a woman and had concealed his sex throughout his entire life, even from his relationships. The revelation came as, quote, a shock to nearly everyone, including the women who had considered themselves his wives, as well as his sons and the musicians who traveled with him. To explain away any intimacy that would have happened between his partners, Billy reportedly said that he was in a serious car accident accident that mutilated his body, leaving him unable to perform. At the time this was revealed, it sent shockwaves through the music scene where trans performers were basically completely unheard of. In at number seven is Prince. The iconic pop singer is considered one of the greatest musicians to have ever lived, but he also had a secret that was only uncovered upon his tragic and sudden death in 2016. After he passed, many stories started to come to light as both bank statements became public and from various sources. These bank statements revealed that Prince had been secretly donating insane sums of money to various charities throughout his life, each with the condition that the donation be private and that the donor be kept a secret. A few organizations that he did support in the days before his death were the Harlem Children's Zone and Uptown Dance Academy New York. He even donated $12,000 to the Louisville Free Public Library in order to keep it from closing, all under the condition that they keep his name unlisted from donor records. He reportedly gave thousands away at a time, particularly to charities related to children, as his own child tragically passed away after only six days of life. He also focused on environmental issues, and uniquely, unlike a lot of celebrities who choose to invest so they get a financial return, Prince just donated to foundations that support environmental causes and a transition to solar power. Number six, Jimmy Page. Jimmy Page is the virtuoso guitarist and founder of Led Zeppelin. Jimmy is largely known as one of the greatest guitarists in the history of rock music. I mean, he set the standard for the many who have imitated his electric style. Yet, what he may not want you to know about him is his predatory relationship with a young girl who was only 14 at the time. While he toured with Led Zeppelin, Jimmy dated Lori Maddox, although they kept their relationship extremely private and basically hidden because it was, you know, illegal and creepy. Even in the loose 70s, this relationship could have put Paige in jail. They dated for a little while, and who knows what they did behind the scenes, but Jimmy eventually dumped her for BB Bell, who was of age at the time, thank God. Either way, not a fan of this one. In at number five, Five is Matthew Broderick. Matthew Broderick is known largely for his titular role as Ferris Bueller in the John Hughes coming of age film, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. He was also in The Producers and a bunch of other A-list movies. What you may not know about him, however, is that he was directly involved and in fact caused the death of numerous people. He and Jennifer Grey, the star of Dirty Dancing, were on a romantic vacation in Ireland when Matthew head on hit the car of a 28 year old woman and her mother. Both women were pronounced dead at the hospital. The road was straight 
and easy to navigate. The issue was that they were in Ireland, and he, out of habit, drove on the wrong side of the road, which led to the crash. Following the accident, Broderick was convicted of careless driving, but was only fined $175, which to this day, the family of the victims called a quote, travesty of justice. At number four is Jackie Chan. While Jackie Chan appeared as a comedic kung fu fighting man on the screen, his personal life is absolutely insane and surprisingly not well known. In fact, Jackie himself didn't know until well into his career just how many secrets were being kept in his family. He learned in 2003 that he had two secret brothers living in China and that his father was a nationalist spy on secret missions to bust substance crime in mainland China. In fact, that's where he met Jackie's mother. In what seems like a moment straight out of a noir crime boss movie, Jackie's father met his mother, Li Li Chan, because he was sent to bust her as an infamous dealer and legendary gambler in Shanghai. So his mother was one of the lords of the Chinese underbelly and his father was sent to arrest her. The two fled to Australia together where they lived until their death. Jackie's father also revealed that the actor's real family name isn't Chan at all, but rather Fang. How's that for a family reunion? In at number three is Rose McGowan. Rose was one of the founding spokespersons in the Me Too movement, joining dozens of women who brought Harvey Weinstein to justice. She is best known for her 90s movies like Jawbreaker, Scream, and Encino Man. But what you may not know about her is her rather horrifying upbringing. She was born in Florence, Italy, where her parents lived in a commune called the Children of God. Basically, she was born into a cult that had mass allegations of horrifying crimes against humanity. I can't really say what they are because of YouTube restrictions, but if you're curious, I suggest you look into it with a serious content warning in mind. The cult in question lured people in with promises of all kinds of physical intimacy and activities with extremely young women set to perform such acts on the men in the cult. Luckily for Rose, she was largely protected from the more heinous side of the cult and she and her family fled when she was 14 years old, where quote, we hid in an old stone house and had to boil pots of water to take baths. The cult sent people to find us. I remember a man trying to break in with a hammer. Number two on the list, Rihanna. While the celebrity singer is in the news lately for her exciting pregnancy with ASAP Rocky, what you may not know about her is her rather insane early life and the secrets that they kept even from her until they were finally brought to light. Old family photos were unearthed that reveal a secret side of the family that Rihanna herself rarely ever talks about, her father's other kids. Rihanna has three older siblings through her father by three different women as he admitted to being quite the womanizer in his heyday. Her and her father have an extremely complicated relationship as he has dealt with substance use issues for most of his life. And now to find out that she had three other siblings she knew nothing about, it's a wonder the two have stuck together through so much. And in at number one is Mark Wahlberg. The actor and singer needs no introduction, but he may need a little disclaimer beside his name for the rather horrifying incident he caused in the 80s. When he was 16 years old, Mark had an extremely harsh life and he ended up brutally harming an elderly Vietnamese man in a racially motivated attack. He shouted slurs at him while physically harming him so badly that Mark was charged with attempted murder. While he was sentenced to two years in prison, for some reason he only served 45 days. In a beautiful show of faith, his victim, whose name is Johnny Trin, stated that he forgives Mark. Quote, everyone deserves another chance. He was young and reckless, but I forgive him now. He paid for his crime when he went to prison. Mark got a pardon from the court, basically exonerating him from his crime, an action that he later stated he regrets. Quote, I didn't need that. I spent 28 years righting the wrong. I was relieved to find out that the injuries to his eye had occurred in the early 70s and not from the incident that happened that night, but I was able to meet with him and his wife and his daughter and apologize for these horrific acts. Some good can come out of it. First up on our list today is Marlon Brando. Marlon Brando is considered to be one of the most handsome Hollywood stars to grace the silver screen. He is also known for being an extremely talented actor who led a bit of a rough and tumble life. But what you may not know is that his ladies man attitude resulted in various affairs and marriages, and well, eight kids, with the actor adopting three additional kids on top of that. And sadly, some of these children would have extremely unhappy lives. In 1990, one of Marlon Brando's sons, Christian, shot his sister Sheehan's boyfriend. Apparently, he had suspected that Sheehan's boyfriend was harming her physically, and so Christian ended up taking his life when the altercation escalated. He was charged with manslaughter and served six years in prison. Sadly, that wasn't the only horror that the Brando children would go through, as only five years later, Sheehan tragically ended up taking her own life after a diagnosis with schizophrenia and a steady mental decline. 
Next on the list is Liv Tyler. We all know her as the stunning half elf woman in Lord of the Rings. She's also known as the daughter of Steven Tyler, the eccentric frontman of Aerosmith. However, that wasn't always the case. Liv Tyler was originally born as Liv Rundgren, and she believed that the famous musician and music producer Todd Rundgren was her father. However, a chance encounter as an 8 year old with Steven Tyler started to unravel Liv's true parentage. During the meeting, Steven pointed out the eerie similarities between his own daughter and Liv, which led to her mother finally confessing the secret. Liv wasn't related to Todd at all, and in fact, her mother had kept the secret to protect her daughter because Stephen was going through some serious substance issues at the time of their brief relationship. Liv eventually changed her last name to Tyler, but kept Rundgren as her middle name in homage to the man who raised her as his own at some point. Damn, I wish I had two rock star dads. Next up is MMA legend Ronda Rousey. She's got a spectacular record, and it's impossible to penetrate her amazing fighting legacy as she has cemented herself as one of the greats. Her personal life, though, well, a little touchier. In fact, Ronda has a history of aggression in her past relationships, having violently harmed an ex boyfriend. She is also a conspiracy theorist who has some extremely harmful opinions. She shared on her Twitter that she believes that the horrifying Sandy Hook incident was actually a manufactured incident and that the people and children involved were actually actors. I can't think of anything more harmful and disgusting than promoting that the real life harm of was done to take away guns from Americans. Rhonda shared the video and described it as quote, extremely interesting and a must watch documentary. Eventually, after obvious backlash, Rhonda deleted the video and her manager attempted to scrub any trace of it from the internet which obviously didn't happen because it is in fact the internet. Next up is Frank Sinatra. The smooth singing romantic who charmed his audiences into the hall of greats has a seriously dark secret personal life. In fact, every move Frank Sinatra made was meticulously tracked by the FBI for 40 years in pages and pages of files. Why you may ask? Well, outside of being held in suspicion for dodging the draft because of a supposed ear infection, he is also thought to have strong mafia ties. He's been seen in cahoots with a revolving cast of characters connected to the criminal underworld, including Chicago mob boss Sam Giancana, with whom he was close friends. Apparently, the FBI was so closely tracking Sinatra because he had introduced Sam to John F. Kennedy's campaign for presidency in an attempt to deliver union votes. Dodging the draft and electing John F. Kennedy, Sinatra is a man after my own heart. Next up is the actor who portrayed Spider-Man in the original Spider-Man movies, you know, the ones with the PlayStation font. Well, Tobey Maguire has had an insane childhood that was largely hidden from the public when he became an A-lister. He came from a very financially strained family. His parents adopted several of his cousins after his aunt passed away suddenly, and the weight of now caring for all these kids left them destitute and broke. In a desperate attempt to provide for all these children, Toby's dad attempted to rob a bank. His attempt was unsuccessful, and his father had to spend some time in prison for his crime. Thankfully though, he was released after a few years because it was his first time offending, and the judge sympathized with his cause. Luckily for them, they made it out of the ordeal and now Toby is an internationally recognized celebrity. Next on the list is Kevin Spacey. And not for what you might think, because really nothing can keep what he did a secret and his attempts at hiding it are abysmal at best. But what you may not know is that there are more than a few skeletons in his closet, and he's got one secret that I actually didn't know. Kevin's left leaning political views are very well known, so it may come as a surprise that his father was vehemently racist and believed that white people were a superior race. Kevin refuses to talk about his father, but his siblings have opened up a handful of times about their traumatic childhood, often describing their father as an evil monster. Apparently, their father would also continually his kids while they were growing up, and it got so bad that Kevin's brother Randy almost took the life of his father while the young boy was hiding in a closet, but he never opened the door. Although Kevin is a reprehensible human being, no boy deserves to grow up in such a horrifying environment. Next up is a K-pop idol whose secret is definitely out of the bag at this point. We all know just how strict and borderline harmful the K-pop industry is towards its stars often restricting diets to near starvation in an attempt to get their already lean singers to lose weight, alongside 12 to 20 hours a day of dance practice. 
But one K-pop idol from the band Bang Bang has some dark underground secrets that only recently came to light. Si and Gri was sentenced last year to three years in prison for the crime of running an underground nightclub that bet heavily on foreign casinos where gambling is illegal. He was also charged with providing women to business executives for, you know, services. Apparently, he's been doing this for years, and we only recently found out during a Korean military bust. Now it seems like sadly his K-pop days are over as he spends the next three years behind bars. Next up is Hollywood actor Casey Affleck. I'm surprised we haven't done this one yet, honestly. Known for movies like Manchester by the Sea and Gone Baby Gone, Affleck is a critic's best friend. But he's not everyone's best friend. In fact, Casey has been accused by multiple women of committing horrifying acts against them. Some say that he snuck into their bedrooms, other that when they refused his advances, he sent them violent and aggressive texts. Other women have said that he ordered a crew member to expose himself to this one woman. All of these allegations were attempted to be taken to court to be filed as multi-million dollar lawsuits, but they were both settled for unknown amounts. Thanks to these settlements, we may never know if these accusations are true or not, but it seems really odd that not many people are talking about it these days. In fact, when asked about it, Casey brushes it off as hearsay and his dark past seems to be fading into secrecy once again. Second to first on our list is Oprah Winfrey. The talk show host who revolutionized the game, Oprah's name is synonymous with the monolithic empire she's built surrounding her image. She's known for her lovable, relatable, and welcoming personality. But her humble beginnings make her rise to fame all the more deserved. In fact, Oprah was born in Mississippi to a single teenager mom, and she grew up in extreme poverty. During her childhood, the cost of raising a baby became too much for the young mother, so she sent Oprah to go live with her father, or at least one of the men who she thinks might have been her father. During her time with her dad, Oprah's mom gave birth to two more babies, one of which was given up for adoption. The real kicker here is that Oprah only found out about her sister Patricia in 2010. While a gut reaction to this news may be to cast harsh judgment on Oprah's mother, it is important to remember that it is impossible to know what it is like unless you have been in her position. For those who have been, we think you understand the brevity of her decision. Last up is Nicolas Cage. Now, I guess it's not exactly a dark secret here, and I may be cheating a little bit, but I only just found this out when I was writing this script, and wow, wild. Anyways, Nicolas Cage is known for his fun and sometimes extremely cheesy acting in movies like Face Off and Ghost Rider. But what you may not know is that Nicolas Cage isn't even his real name. In fact, Cage's birth name is Nicholas Kim Coppola, and his uncle is the famed director Francis Ford Coppola. The name change resulted from his wish not to cash in on the fame associated with the Coppola name in Hollywood, though the actor did end up appearing in several of Francis's films. It is quite believable when thinking about it for a few seconds, as both talents are just as eccentric as the other. The principal difference is that Francis Ford Coppola's odd ideals gave the world masterpieces like The Godfather and Apocalypse Now, while Cage gifts audiences with wild overacting and melodrama. Number 10, Matthew Perry. During his time playing Chandler Bing on the TV show Friends, fans would have never guessed that Matthew Perry was privately struggling with a Vicodin addiction. It all started with a horrible jet ski accident in 1997 that left the actor with pretty serious injuries, for which he was then prescribed the pain blocking medication Vicodin. But throughout all this, the star was able to maintain his acting career and managed to keep his dependency under wraps. He told the New York Times in 2002 that he went to work in extreme cases of hangover, and it was so horrible to be like that and still have to be funny on top of that. His friend's co-star Lisa Kudrow noticed everything. Quote, when Matthew was sick, it was not fun. We were just hopelessly standing on the sidelines. We were hurting a lot. Sometime later, the beloved actor confessed that the series was causing him immense stress, which subsequently made his addiction worse. But throughout all of this, Perry has a positive outlook on life. Quote, the best thing about me is that if an alcohol alcoholic comes to me and says, will you help me stop drinking? I will say, yes, I know how to do that. So it's amazing that he's now able to help others who are in the same situation. Number nine, Machine Gun Kelly. In a candid conversation with Dave Franco for Interview Magazine, the 32 year old singer revealed that he was dealing with a secret dependency on illicit substances while writing and recording music. He said that he believed that this is how you attained a certain level or unlocked something in your brain. Quote, Adderall was a huge thing for 
bothered me for a long time. And I went from orally taking it to then putting it. And then it became something where I was scared to ever go into a studio if I didn't have something. Kelly went on to say that he wouldn't even step out unless there was a medicine man who was going to visit him and give him what he needed. Quote, and that's where it becomes a problem. You're telling yourself you can't do this without that when really it's in you the whole time. If that pill did that for you, then everyone who's taken that would just be making albums and writing songs. And so that limited me. The singer explained that the most challenging part of recovery is separating his music persona, Machine Gun Kelly, from who he really is as Colson Baker and credits his girlfriend, Megan Fox, as an essential part of his support system. But Kelly is putting in the work to live a sober life and is currently taking steps to change. In fact, he had his first therapy session last month, so things are looking good for him. Number eight, Demi Lovato. The star has struggled with addiction since 2010, when she first entered rehab at the age of 18. Over the years, Demi returned to rehab to treat an eating disorder, self-harm, and substance addiction. For the Disney Channel star, the success of Camp Rock and various other shows really launched her into the spotlight. But the way she coped with the stress and demands of superstardom was unfortunately turning to illicit substances. She managed to keep this all under wraps throughout her youth until her secret life was eventually exposed. In July of 2018, Demi suffered an overdose, and she spent several days in the hospital before going to treatment later that summer. In August, she told her Instagram followers that she was hospitalized, and she released the following statement on Instagram, quote, what I've learned is that this illness is not something that disappears or fades with time. It's something I must continue to overcome and have not done yet. Since then, her journey through the ups and downs of sobriety has helped many people, and she has since been able to speak openly about her addictions. Number seven, Ben Affleck. The actor has long been vocal about his sobriety throughout his career, starting with his openness about his family history and rehab stays. But it was wasn't always this way. In fact, for many years, he was battling his addiction to alcohol in secret. In 2012, he confessed to Barbara Walters that his father was an alcoholic and said that he drank all day, every day, explaining that the legacy of that is quite powerful and hard to shake. After starring in Goodwill Hunting, Affleck took a serious look at his binge drinking. Quote, I just wanted to stop. I started regretting some things I did when I was drunk. It's funny to be obnoxious or out of control. I have almost no inhibitions. So it's dangerous for me. But it wasn't until 2001 that the actor actually sought treatment for his alcoholism. He has since been to rehab multiple times and has been in recovery ever since. Things have been going well for the actor recently, but recovery can be an uphill battle. And Affleck suffered another setback in October 2019, two months after celebrating one year of sobriety, when he was photographed leaving a Halloween party intoxicated. But in January last year, he revealed on the podcast Awards Chatter that he feels very good despite having slips here and there. Number six, Jamie Lee Curtis. It was 1998 and the iconic screen queen was cooking dinner for her and her two children in her LA home. And doing what she usually did, Jamie reached into her pants pocket and scooped up five Vicodin and swallowed them all at once with a swig of wine. But she didn't realize that a friend who was staying at the house was watching her from a doorway and she was caught red handed. Quote, the jig was up. Now I knew someone knew. I had been nursing a secret Vicodin addiction for a very long time, over 10 years. Jamie had been hooked on the substance after routine plastic surgery to remove the puffiness around her eyes. She said that the surgery itself wasn't painful, but they gave her Vicodin to aid recovery, and from there on, she was hooked. Not only that, but the addiction ran in her family, and her brother Nicholas sadly passed away from substance use disorder at the age of 21 in 1994. Last year, Jamie opened up to Hello Magazine magazine about her struggle. Quote, my recovery is the single greatest accomplishment that I will ever get to do in this human life. I have been clean and sober for 22 years. The actress is now an advocate for policies to reduce opioid misuse. Number five, Dak Shepard. The actor, podcast host, and husband of Christian Bell has famously talked about his recovery process. In his podcast, The Armchair Expert, Dak said that he was proud to have been sober from alcohol and for the past 16 years, and that he wanted to be open and honest about his recovery journey in order to help others who might be struggling with active addiction. But talking about it wasn't always easy for him. In fact, earlier this year, he said he initially didn't want to go public with the relapse out of fear of losing his connection with people. The actor also reflected on his rock bottom and how his infamous 2004 interview with Conan O'Brien almost derailed his career entirely. Dax did the pre-interview with Conan while 
while blackout drunk. Quote, I show up on the show, I don't know what he's talking about, I can tell he's queuing me up for stories I've told, but I don't know any of the stories. So I'm just doing what I can to be funny out there and I am a mess. During the interview, he noticeably slurred his words before falling off the side of his chair and accidentally flipping the coffee table that was in front of him. But he's come a long way since then and now uses his experience to talk openly about addiction and sobriety in a way that is both funny and relatable. Number four, Jamie Campbell Bower. The 33 year old British actor began his ascent to fame in Sweeney Todd, the demon barber of Fleet Street in 2007 alongside Johnny Depp. He was then cast in Twilight New Moon as the ancient leader Caius and starred as a young gellet Grindelwald in Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1 the following year. Today Jamie is best known for playing the villain Vecna in series 4 of Stranger Things but has since revealed that he has been suffering from substance addiction in his early years. The actor posted a two part tweet telling fans about his problems with substance misuse and his time in hospital receiving mental health treatment. Quote, 12 and a half years ago I was in active addiction, hurting myself and those around me who I love the most. It got so bad that eventually I ended up in hospital for mental health. But he went on to assure fans that he is now seven and a half years clean and sober. He admitted that he had made many mistakes in his life but each day is a chance to start again atone for mistakes and grow. He ended the tweet with an inspiring message by saying that he is so grateful to be sober and that all of us are works in progress. Number three, Bradley Cooper. In a new episode of the Smartless podcast, hosted by Will Arnett, Jason Bateman and Sean Hayes, Bradley Cooper opened up about the addiction struggles that haunted his 20s and how a friend jump-started his journey to recovery. The Oscar-nominated actor said that when he moved to LA for his role in Alias, he felt like he was back in high school which ruined his self esteem. Quote, I couldn't get into any clubs, no girls wanted to look at me, I was totally depressed. He was later fired from the series and was dealing with an injury to his Achilles tendon at the same time. During this trying time in his career, he turned to and his addiction slowly got worse over time. It was only when Cooper went to a dinner party with Arnett when he was 29 that he realized he had hit rock bottom. Arnett, who was essentially his hero, called him out for his rude behavior during the party and then the actor had a light bulb moment and realized that he had a problem with illicit substances and alcohol. Then between the ages of 29 to 34, the actor worked really hard at sobriety and had an ongoing journey of self-acceptance thanks to therapy. Number two. Travis Barker. The Blink-182 drama was in a horrific plane crash in 2008 that killed everyone on board except for him and one passenger. Although Travis survived, his two closest friends, Chris Baker and Charles Still, lost their lives that day. The only other survivor, his friend Adam Goldstein, died the following year. In the aftermath of all the tragedy, Travis spent three months in the hospital and had to have 26 different surgeries performed on him and multiple skin grafts to treat his various injuries from the crash. But what's truly amazing here is prior to the accident, Travis had been suffering from an intense addiction to opioids for several years, as it was only the life-changing crash that altered his mental state enough to ditch the substances. He told Men's Health, quote, people are always like, did you go to rehab? And I say, no, I was in a plane crash. That was my rehab. Lose three of your friends and almost die? That was my wake up call. If I wasn't in a crash, I would probably never quit. Travis said that he used to smoke an excessive amount of a certain leafy green substance and used painkillers as a method of coping with his fear of flying that he developed osteoporosis. In fact, in the hospital for 11 weeks following Following the crash, Travis frequently regained consciousness during surgeries because his opioid tolerance was so high. And coming in at number one, Robert Downey Jr. The actor is now one of the most notable and inspiring cases for sobriety. Robert Downey Jr. has had a phenomenal Hollywood comeback story and is now one of the most bankable and highly paid actors in show business, starring in blockbuster comic book films like Iron Man and in The Avengers. But the actor spent most of his early career under the influence leading to high profile arrests and a string of rehab visits. His addiction started during childhood and was allegedly encouraged by his father, Robert Downey Sr., who also had a substance use disorder and allowed his son to try a leafy green substance at only six years old. According to a 1996 People article, the illicit substances actually facilitated 
an emotional bond between the two. And so for years, addiction was incredibly difficult for Downey Jr. to break away from. It was only when his wife, Susan Downey, revealed in 2003 that she gave her husband an ultimatum that he decided to quit for good. And apparently, it stuck because 10 years later, in an interview with Daily Mail, the actor credited a combination of 12-step programs, yoga, meditation, and therapy for keeping him sober.